Hey everyone, Tech Rally here, and I got some updates for you. As you may or may not have known, I quit my previous job to pursue new opportunities, and I started my first week. Based on the title and the thumbnail, you probably know that I got into a Fang company. If you don't know what Fang is, it's Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. And no, I didn't get into all of them, but I did get into one, luckily. Before I tell you which company I'm working at, I want to share my software developer journey. This is not a story about me bragging about my life and look at me now, but I want this to come off as an example of what it takes to be a professional software engineer that is capable of working at both small startups and large companies like Fang even if it means you take a non-traditional route. If you are trying to break into tech, I highly encourage you to watch my other videos. A lot of my videos come not only from my own experience, but research I've done talking to junior developers, recruiters, and hiring managers. These are lessons and tangible advices I wish someone told me when I was starting my journey. So definitely do subscribe if you want to stay up to date whenever I do post. As you may or may not know, I attended the Flatiron School in 2015 in New York City. I quit my job of three years because I just knew that I didn't want to stay in my industry. And if you're curious, it was the semiconductor industry. A coding bootcamp school is super expensive. I'll acknowledge that. But it was something that I needed to become a software engineer and make it a career. And that's one of the main things I want to emphasize. I wanted to be a professional software developer. To me, this was a commitment to myself to jumpstart my career. And just the idea of having a structure with only three months of learning to become a software engineer, why not, right? But I also knew that this wasn't going to be some kind of golden ticket. Just because I attend a coding bootcamp school doesn't necessarily guarantee I will get a job. I had to say no to so many events and commitments, birthdays, engagement parties, weddings, you name it. I spent my time from nine to five in school doing lessons and labs. Then from six to even 12, 1 a.m. at home, I was nonstop coding, working and grinding. And eventually I was able to find a full-time job after I graduated about two months later. And, and no, it wasn't a fame company right off the bat. I wasn't making $100,000 a year, but that was okay for me. I knew I wasn't going to magically be a senior developer coming out of a bootcamp, and that's something I really want to mention here. Being a software developer is a never-ending journey, and just because you have a job doesn't necessarily mean your learning is over. If anything, this is just the beginning, but the benefit is that you're going to get paid and learn from experienced developers while doing it. It's been six years since I started my coding journey, and I truly believe I got to where I am because I never stopped learning. I've always tried to level up, and it started from Flatiron School to my first and second job. And even now, three months is not enough for you to become a software developer. And what I mean by that is that you shouldn't want to stop learning after you get that first job. I started off my professional career as a junior and I learned so much from pair programming with experienced developers, learning outside of work through online courses and tutorials and even meetups. I'm not the best developer by any means, but my hunger for always wanting to be better every single day has really gotten me to where I am now. Beyond just the tech, I learned about empathy, leading projects, interviewing and mentoring junior developers, especially my last job. And if you see my other videos, you know, I've been at that company for five years and I got to give props to my last CTO, Michael, who gave me a lot of opportunities to figure things out, even at my low level. I created a front end library, got assigned to large ticket items that was contract sensitive and led a lot of initiatives to improve front end performance. The accumulation of knowledge that I was able to gain was not instant. And I hope this story is once again showing you that you can't just coast after your first job. If I did, I probably wouldn't get into a fame company. When I was ready to start applying, to be honest, fame companies were not in my mind. I told myself I don't want to work for a big company and things like that, but internally I was a bit scared. As much as I learned, I don't think I ever felt ready to join a company like that because of all the storage you hear, how competitive it is, and how much algorithms you need to know. But crazy enough, I got contacted for a front end role by a thing company, and it took me a few days to respond because I was already interviewing at smaller startups. And don't get me wrong, I got messages from thing companies prior to that, but I never really pursued it because internally I just felt I was never ready. But I told myself, why not? You never know. And I started the conversation with my recruiter. It was a front end role, which is definitely up my alley. And I was itching for a new opportunity. 
My recruiter explained to me what I would be doing in my role and as great or ungrade of a software developer I was, I definitely needed to study. No matter what, and I still follow this mantra to this day, is nothing beats preparation. I learned very quickly when I was interviewing at small startups prior to my Fang one, I was super, super rusty. I didn't have my stories down, and yeah, I probably didn't deserve to get those roles. Rather than sulking about it, I went on my way to talk to the recruiters and asked what areas could I improve, and I took that to heart when I approached my Fang interview. If there's one piece of advice that I would give to you if you didn't get that job while interviewing, talk to the recruiter because getting that kind of information is super invaluable. Yes, they might not respond back to you or they just say, I can't provide that information, but at least you ask and try to get that feedback. Getting feedback is the most important thing you can do at that point in your career because you have to know what mistakes you're making. And to this day, I still believe that if I didn't get my feedback from the previous companies I applied to, then I don't think I would have got my job at Fang. One thing I did that probably might come off as cocky or whatnot, but I intentionally and genuinely wanted to let my previous recruiters know that, hey, thank you for the feedback. Because of that, I was able to get a different job because they didn't have to give me that feedback, but they did anyway. So I really appreciate when recruiters give me that kind of information, um, especially because recruiters aren't actually at the interview. They're getting that feedback from the engineers themselves. So if you are able to leverage that kind of communication flow, I highly recommend to do it. The process was about two months. Of course, there were some behavioral and technical questions, which I study for. I went hard on leak code, practiced my JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and made sure I knew all of my stories that I wanted to share with the people that were interviewing me. Many, many interviews later and waiting a few stressful days, I finally got the call for the role. The offer was great and I took it. So without further ado, I'll let you know that I will be a front-end developer at Amazon. Who would have thought that five years ago when I said that I wanted to get better at front-end development, it would lead to an opportunity like this. So I'm not recommending you to just pigeonhole yourself to just one type of aspect of software development, but at the same time, do what you enjoy doing. And honestly, I feel like your skills will improve. This is a very interesting industry where it's really hard to learn everything and be good at everything. But if you find your niche and things like that, it's something that I highly encourage you to do because yes, I do know backend development and I know how to build APIs, but compared to some of the other senior level developers I talked to in relation to scaling your APIs and things like that, that's definitely not in my realm house. But at the same time, they probably don't know the same stuff that I do in terms of front end uh, performance improvement, scalable CSS and things like that. So definitely encourage you to find what you enjoy and find that passion throughout your software development journey. If you are a beginning developer, I think you do need to get exposed to everything just to make sure you fully understand the difference between what front end and back end development is. But overall, uh, just getting that experience is always going to be the most important thing. And that's kind of what I'm trying to relay through my experience of getting a job at Amazon is that it wasn't just a home run that I got my job. It was through incremental gains that I was able to get my job. It was when I attended the coding bootcamp school and I learned for three and a half months. It was when I got my first full stack developer job where I got exposed to many different levels of production level code bases, learned some C sharp, learned some CSS, learned some JavaScript, only to realize that I actually really preferred doing front end development and that led me to get my second job where I worked for five years. And I started to fully understand at a very intimate level what JavaScript really was, what is actually happening under the hood when I do JavaScript. All of these things were just building me up to become a very, very technical developer, but at the same time, someone that can really articulate my thoughts whenever I do write code. So yes, I just wanna emphasize, it's a progression to these kinds of roles. You may not get it right away the first time, but take the incremental steps to better yourself and always level up yourself. There's no ending in this journey. And I love the fact that it never ends because this is what it means to be a software developer. And that's the whole story. This story isn't about me bragging about my success. It's about you. 
if you're watching this, take notes on my mentality and my approach to becoming a software developer. I embraced being uncomfortable and having the curiosity to always be a little bit better than the day before. I know for a fact that if I didn't have this curious attitude then and even now towards software development, I wouldn't have gotten this job. Whether you are new or experienced, I hope that this is more of a guideline to show you that you can get any job as long as you keep leveling up. I'm not the best developer, far from it, but I'm constantly trying my best. So what does this mean for my channel? I'm still going to do my best to provide you with value and pump out content whenever I can. A lot of my videos are related to genuinely giving my personal honest advice about breaking into tech. And if you are really hungry for that kind of content, I recommend you to subscribe to my channel. For those of you that are looking or even starting your journey, I say keep building developers, your time will come. Tech Rally out.